Well, hello out there to the patrons of Barrington Area Library. We are Matt and Cynthia Gruel of Nostalgia Entertainment. We are so thankful to the library and to Danielle over at the library for having us perform our live stream for you this evening. And if you've seen us perform before, you might remember we're married. We ah, are. It's so cute, isn't it? I know. Something so like cute. that. <laughs> and now during our live stream tonight, um, you can comment using the chat feature there. We will see those comments after the show because we are performing live for you right now. But feel free to share those memories. You might have some trivia thoughts about the songs we sing and we will see them after the show. Yes. So without further ado, a Barrington Area Library, are you ready to celebrate the music of the 1950s? Because we are. <laughs> We want you to have fun tonight, all right? You might be in the privacy of your room, your living room, your bedroom, whatever, but you can still have fun. Sing along, get up and dance. <laughs> Deep down in Louisiana, close in New Orleans, way back up in the woods among the evergreens. This little log cabin made of earth and wood where lived a country boy named Johnny Be Good, who never ever learned to read or write so well. Go, 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 the driver's mate When people pass them by They would stop and say Oh my, but that little country boy Can play Go, go Go, Johnny, go, go Go, Johnny, go, go Go, Johnny, go, go Go, Johnny, go, go Johnny, be good I was a rolling and a strolling. 
rolling and a strolling. I wasn't moving and a grooving. Moving and a grooving. I wasn't moving and a grooving. Moving and a grooving. I wasn't really with a feeling. Splish, splash. Why must I be a teenager in love? Each time we have a quarrel, it almost breaks my heart. Cause I am so afraid that we will have to part Each night I ask the stars above Why must I be a teenager in love? I cry a tear for nobody but you I'll be a lonely one if you should say we're Want to make me cry? That won't be so hard to do. If you should say goodbye, I'll still go on loving you. Each night I ask the stars above. Why must I be a teenager in love? We are Matt and Cynthia Gruel of Nostalgia Entertainment. We love vintage music. We, we do shows. We have 10 of them that range from the 20s all the way to the 60s. But tonight, we are celebrating all things 1950s. Now, did you know that the legendary singer Nat King Cole actually grew up right here in Chicago? He did. And as a matter of fact, he started out as a young jazz piano player. And back in the day, he was with an instrumental trio back in the 40s called the King Cole Swingsters. But even back then, before he was known as a singer, um, people were kind of getting a little, they were getting a little notice of him. And he was asked to sing on their breaks. And he would sing Sweet Lorraine to his audience. And that's what began the audience's fascination with his smooth voice. So in 1951, Nat King Cole recorded his signature song, which they first named Incomparable. Oh. They didn't like the ring of that, so they changed it to Unforgettable. In fact, we love the song so much, we've named our show after it. So welcome to Unforgettable Music of the 50s. And this is a slow dance out there, Barrington Area Library. You can do that in your... Uh, grab your room. friend, grab your hubby, your wife, your girl, your boy. <laughs> Unforgettable. That's what you are. The near fall Like a song of love that clings to me How the thought of you Does things to me never before Has someone been Unforgettable. 
singing that with my husband yes. over here. That's a good one. So let's talk a little bit about doo-wop music. Now, doo-wop was a groundbreaking genre of music that actually hit the music scene in the 1940s, but it achieved popularity in the 1950s. And this type of music, it featured those tight harmonies, simple beats, little or even no instrumentation at all, and of course, those nonsense words, you know, like shoo-wop, doo-wada, wada, yippity boom Right. So <laughs> in 1954, our next song had the honor of becoming the first doo-wop song to hit the top 10 pop charts. And it was the Crew Cuts who took Shaboom to number one for nine whole weeks. Okay, we need a little snap out there from you guys. You're a percussion today. Hey, na na ya ding dong a lang a lang a lang ha boo ba doo ba doo ba doo doo day Oh, life Ooh, could be a dream yeah. if I could take up in paradise of above If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love Life could be a dream, sweetheart Hello, hello again Shaboom and hope and we'll meet again Life could be a dream If I could take you up to paradise of above If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love Life could be a dream, sweetheart Every time I look at you, oh, something's on my mind. If you do what I want you to, oh, baby, we'd be so fine. Oh, life could be a dream if I could take you up in paradise of above. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life could be a dream, sweetheart. Time for you to sing it with us. Every time I look at you, oh, something's on my mind. If you do what I want you to, oh, baby, we'd be so fine. Oh, life could be a dream if I could take you up to paradise of above. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life could be a dream, sweetheart. Hello, hello again. That 
That's fun. So now at this point, we are going to test your 1950s knowledge. All right. So the rock and roll era, it's generally dated back to about March of 1955. And it was with the premiere of a movie called The Blackboard Jungle. Now, it was the song that played over the opening credits that kind of created a frenzy among teenagers, and it catapulted rock and roll into the international spotlight. So do you know what song that was? They are the library. I bet someone guessed it. It was a Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley <laughs> and the Comets. And Rock Around the Clock was chosen to reflect the kind of music that teenagers were listening to at that time. By the way, Rock Around the Clock also has the privilege of being the first ever rock song to hit number one on the Billboard charts. Now before we do it, just really quickly, I'm going to teach you guys out there the hand jive, because we hope you'll do the hand jive with us while we do this song, okay? So real quickly, everything's in twos. So first, do it with me. We're going to slap. And then we're going to clap. Easy. Now we're going to do a right over and a left over. So let's start over. That's like half of it. Slap and clap and a right over and a left. Now we're going to add on a fist and a fist and a hitchhike. Let's do it again. Nice and slow. Okay, come on. Do it with us. Slap and clap and a right and a left and a fist and a fist and a hitchhike. And guess what, Barrington area? It's faster. So let's try it up to speed, shall we? Okay. okay. A five, six, seven, eight. A slap, a clap, a right, and a left, a fist, and a fist, and a hitchhike. I know you've got it out there, okay? So have fun and do it with us. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. I'll put your glad rags on. Join me, hun, and we'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock until we're broad and late. We're gonna rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight. When the clock strikes two, Three and four, if the band slows down, we'll yell for more. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock around the rock until we're running like we're gonna rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight. Hand jive, a five, six, Here we seven, go. eight. Slap. When the chimes ring five, six, and seven, we'll be rocking up in seventh heaven. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. We're gonna rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight. When it's eight, nine, ten, eleven, two, I'll be going strong, and so will you. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock until the broad daylight. We're gonna rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight. Hand jive, Here five, we go. six, seven, eight. Slap, clap, right, left, fist. Ooh, you look good, baby. Do it again. Slap, clap, right, left, fist. And hitchhike. <laughs> All right, baby, let's bring it home. Oh, when the clock strikes 12, we'll cool off then we'll start rocking around the clock again. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. We're going to rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. We're going to rock, going to rock around the clock tonight. All right. So the 50s decade, it's known for so many new styles of music that came out during those 10 years, and rockabilly is one of those new styles. It's literally a combination of hillbilly music with an early form of rock and roll. And the Everly Brothers were certainly part of that movement. Now, Phil and Don Everly, they grew up in a musical family, um, performing with their dad in their, uh, on his uh, radio program in Shenandoah, Iowa. And they, when they were young, though, they were known as... Uh, Little Donnie and baby boy Phil. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> they were also very close friends, though, with another pioneer of the Rocky Billy movement, none other than Bod, Buddy Holly, and uh, they 
toured some in their careers. They did. And um, when Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and the Big Bopper, when they were killed in that awful airplane crash in 1959, well, um, Phil Everly had been so close with Buddy that he actually sat with Buddy's family at his funeral. Now, rumor has it that back in 1956, Buddy Holly and some fellow musicians went to see a Western movie called The Searchers. And uh, John Wayne was the star, and he used a phrase throughout the movie that inspired those young musicians to write a song. What was that phrase, babe? That'll be the day. Oh, that'll be the day when you sing it by, yes. That'll be the day when you make me cry, oh. You say you're gonna leave, you know it's a lie, cause that'll be the day.
got to go. We do. <laughs> so there was a group back in the 50s called the Quarrymen. And the Quarrymen loved that first song, That'll Be the Day, uh, so much that we did there. They loved it so much, they decided they'd record it, send it out to record company and see if they could get a good record deal. Anybody heard of the Quarrymen? Not so much. Uh, yeah, we, we yeah. later would know that group as the Beatles. <gasps> Ooh, that's some good trivia for the library. Also, <laughs> another name. Have anybody heard of Robert Casoto? Yeah. Oh. Well, he later shortened his first name, Robert, to just Bobby, and he sh uh, changed his last name thanks to a takeout restaurant sign that he saw that read Mandarin, but the M-A-N was blacked out. So all he read was Darren. That's how Bobby Darren got his stage name. Now, Bobby Darren, he was raised by his maternal grandmother, whom he was told was his mother. You see, his real mother, Nina, had gotten pregnant out of wedlock at the age of 17, and to avoid scandal at that time, they raised Bobby, thinking that his mother, even that his mother, Nina, they raised him thinking that uh, she was his sister. Oh, dear. That, that sounds like a Jerry Springer episode, doesn't and, it? And, and yeah, it does. <laughs> and not until the poor guy was 32 years old did they finally tell him the tr truth, and that's because he was thinking about entering politics. Oh, yikes. But, you know, Bobby had some huge hits, didn't he? Like Splish Splash. We did a little bit of that earlier this evening. Um, Mac the Knife, another great one, which is in our 20s show, by the way, because it was written in the 20s. Um, but tonight, what we're going to do for Bobby D Darren is his 1959 tune, Beyond the Sea. And it is taken from a French song called La Mer. And now this uh, song was actually recorded by Benny Goodman before Bobby Darren did it. It even showed up in the Cary Grant movie, Every Girl Should Be Married. Somewhere beyond the sea, oh, somewhere waiting My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships that go sailing. Somewhere beyond the sea, he's there with me. If I could fly. I'd go sail. Oh, it's far beyond the star. Oh, it's near beyond the Sure, we'll kiss just, just as before, and happy we'll be beyond the sea, and never again I'll go sing. Now, one of the most uh, colorful musicians from the 1950s certainly was Little Richard. Yes. 
<laughs> Little Richard grew up singing in his local Baptist church down in Macon, Georgia, and he said of himself that I was always changing the key upwards, and once they stopped me from singing in church because I was screaming and hollering so loud. Now, as a young adult, he did become famous for his high-energy, crazy-on-stage antics, right? But first, though, he did have trouble recording songs that kind of captured that essence. He did, because he was a live performer, so going into the recording studio was really hard. And so legend has it that a particular recording session was just not going well at all for him. So little Richard, he took a break, he stole away to an old beat-up piano that was in the back of the studio, and he just started f belting out his frustration on that old beat-up piano. Well... The producers, though, they were still in the room. They overheard his little musical temper tantrum going on in the corner over there, and they just knew that that song was going to be a hit. But first, they had to tone down the original lyrics of Tootie Fruity, Good, Good Booty. Booty. That yeah. wasn't going to fly in the 1950s, no, was it? No, it was not. <laughs> so they toned it down, all right. They toned it down to Tutti Frutti, oh, oh Rudy. Rudy. And by the way, Rolling Stone magazine claims that Tutti Frutti still contains the most inspired rock lyric ever recorded. Bop, bop, ba -doo, bop, <laughs> bop, bam, boom. Tutti Frutti, Come on. oh, oh Rudy. Rudy. Tutti Frutti, oh, oh Rudy. Oh, Tutti Frutti, oh, oh Rudy. Rudy. To get me, oh, I've been to the east, I've been to the west, but she's the gal I love the best. Tootie Fruity, oh, oh Rudy, Tootie Fruity, oh, oh Rudy, Tootie Fruity, oh, oh Rudy, Tootie Fruity, oh Rudy, Tootie Fruity, oh Rudy. A wop, bop, a loop, bop, a wop, bam, boom. Take it, baby. That's what we're talking about. Listen up. I met a guy whose name is Maddie. That's me. He almost drives me batty. I met a guy his name is Maddie. He almost drives me batty. Well, he's a real gone cookie. Yes, sirree. But how's the matter? He's the guy for me. Tootie Fruity. Oh, Rudy. Tootie Fruity. Oh, Rudy. Oh, Tootie Fruity. Oh, Rudy. Tootie Fruity. One of my favorites. Yes. I love that one. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to totally change gears from Little Richard to Doris Day. Aww. And Doris, she is one of the most acclaimed singers of the 20th century. But did you know, Barrington Area Library, that singing was not her first talent? It was not. She actually started her, started her career as a dancer, performing in a local dance duo in Cincinnati. But an auto accident severely injured her leg and curtailed her professional dance career. So, to bide the time during her recovery, she lay in her bed in her room and she began to sing along to the radio and she soon discovered she had another talent. She sure did. <laughs> now, her mama overheard her singing to the radio and found her a voice teacher who gave her three lessons a week for the price of one. Hats off to music teachers. In 1956, Doris Day started starred in The Man Who Knew Too Much. Did you see that one? And she one. sang, K sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Now that song did win the 1956 Academy Award for Best Original Song. It also became kind of Doris Day's signature song, later being used as the theme for her sit song, sitcom, The Doris Day Show. So sing along with us out there, okay? You know this one. When I was just I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. 
what will be When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart what lies ahead. Oh. Will there be rainbows day after day? Here's what my sweetheart said. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. What will, will be, will be. Now I have children of my own. They ask their mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? I tell them tenderly. Que sera, sera. Whatever. Such good advice. Yes. <laughs> so how many of, out, of you out there are country music fans? Oh, I bet we got it, some. I bet so, too. Now, country music, of course, was very much alive and kicking in the 1950s. And we're going to touch on a few of our favorites here in this next little medley. Yes, and in 1956, Johnny Cash got his first number one hit with the song Walk the Line. And he once said, I was newly married at the time, and I suppose I was laying out my pledge of devotion. Now, the song changes keys several times, and later he was asked why he was always humming when he sang the song, and he said, well, it's to, to find my pitch. There it is. Mm, I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep the ends out for the tie that binds. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Mm -hmm. I find it very, very easy to be true. I find myself alone when each day is through. Yes, I'll admit that I'm a fool for you. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Sure is night is dark and day is a lie. I keep you on my mind both day and night. And happiness I know proves that it's right. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Now in 1957, Patsy Cline first sang Walking After Midnight on a TV show. And the audience applauded so loudly that it froze the show's applause meter. I go a walking after midnight out in the moonlight, just, just like, like we used to. Do. I'm always walking. Rock, rock, rock. 
forty-two dollar bill, and I know the spot right over the hill. And then so the pop band dancing is free. So if you wanna have fun, come along with me. I said, Hey, good looking. So what you got looking? How's about cooking something up with me? All righty. So as we mentioned um, earlier, doo-wop, that was a huge movement uh, back in the 1950s. It sure was. And, you know, the Coasters actually had a string of hits um, through their collaboration with the songwriters Lieber and Stoller. Now, one of their novelty songs actually featured a teenager who's given an enormous list of chores to do by his parents, what does he have to say to that? What? Yakety yak. <gasps> Don't talk back. <laughs> now, uh, the song Get a Job was also a one-hit wonder for the Silhouettes, whose tenor was named Richard Lewis and said this. When I was in the service in the early 50s and didn't come home and go to work, my mother said, get a job. And that's basically where the song came from. So enjoy our little medley of Get a Job and Yakety Yak. Shada-da. Every morning about this time she give me out of bed crying, get a job. After breakfast every day she throws the wanders right my way and never fails to say. And when I get that paper, oh, I read it through and through. And then my wife, she never fails to say, if there is any work for me. And when I go back to the house, I hear the woman's mouth preaching and a crying. Tell me that I'm lying about a job. That I never could find. Sha la la, sha la la, sha la, sha la 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 and roll no more, yakety yak. Oh, don't talk back. Just, Just finish, finish cleaning, cleaning up your room. Let's see that the spot with that broom. Get all that garbage out of sight. Or you don't go out Friday night. Yakety yak. Oh, don't talk back. You Just, Just put, put on your coat and hat. And walk yourself to the laundry mat. And when you finish doing that, Bring in the dog and put out the cat. Don't talk back. 
Next up is Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh boy, I'm backing up over here. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis has been, been described as the first wild man of rock and roll. He was also known as the killer and was famous for those wild, crazy piano performances, right? Which included kind of raking his fingers up and down the keys. He would play the piano with his heels. Oh, dear. He was younger <laughs> than I was. Uh -huh, a little bit. And uh, he also would just con sit on the piano and stand on top of the piano and continue playing. And um, this, this won't hold my weight, so that's why I can't yeah, do that Yeah, that's the only tonight. reason. That's the only reason. <laughs> but yeah. you know, in 1957, his greatest hit, Great Balls of Fire, mm -hmm. sold over a million copies in the first 10 days of its release. Impressive. But... The song was often planned or often banned from radio play because of sexual innuendo. Oh, I know how far we've come. Ooh, uh huh. But then um, things got worse for Jerry because when he was just 22 years old, Jerry married his third wife. You heard me correctly, third wife, who also happened to be his 13-year-old cousin. Yikes. Sounds like another Jerry Springer it episode, does. doesn't it? And things got really rough for Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, many of his performances were just outright canceled. His pay went from $10,000 a show to $250. And, you know, after that scandal, he never really did achieve the same level of success. But certainly, this song has stood the test of time. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain Too much love drives a man insane You broke my will, but what a thrill Goodness gracious, great balls of fire I laughed in love cause I thought it was funny You came along and you moved me, honey I changed my mind, this love is fine Goodness gracious, great balls of fire Kiss me, baby Love or should you're fine, you're so kind. You gotta tell this world that you're mine. I, I, I. I chew my nails and I twiddle my thumbs. I'm real nervous, but it's sure real fun. Come on, baby, drive me crazy. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. You're fine, so kind. Gotta tell this world that you're mine. I, I, I. I chew my nails and I twiddle my thumbs. I'm real nervous, but it sure is fun. Come on, baby, drive me crazy. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Fun stuff, too. I tell sure you what. Is. But you know what? We're going to totally change gears again, aren't we? Yes, we, we are. are. We're going to change gears and go to a little Dean Martin, the king of cool. Because he was cool. He was known for his charisma, his confidence, and his smooth voice. And he was so versatile, too. I mean, first off, he was a member of the Rat Pack. Mm -hmm. He was also a famous film star. Right. He was one half of that musical comedy duo Martin and Lewis. Mm -hmm. And he was also host of his very own show, The Dean Martin Show. Yes, but maybe you did not know this about Dean Martin. Dean Martin actually dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. Really? Do you know why? Why? Well, it was because he said he was smarter than his teacher, so why oh. not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, as a young man, Dean Martin bootlegged liquor. He worked as a speakeasy croupier in an illegal casino. And he was actually also a very successful boxer. Oh. But we all know him, of course, as that accomplished crooner. And we hope you enjoy two of his signature songs, That's Amore and Sway. Please sing this first line with us. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Where the world seems to shine like you've had too much 
Stars make you drool just like a pasta pizzool. That's amore. That's amore. When you dance down the street, where the cloud of your feet, you're in love. When you walk in a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, he's in your When marimba rhythm starts to play, dance with me and make me sway. Like the lazy ocean hugs the shore, hold me close, sway me more. Like a flower bending in the breeze, bend with me, sway with me. When we dance, you have a way with me, stay with me, sway with me. Dear, but my eyes will see only you. Only you have that magic technique. When we swear, I go weak. I can hear the sound of violence long before it begins. Make me thrill as only you know how. Sway me soon, sway me now. Can Sarah, you can be careful. So now we're getting close to the end of the show here, and yeah. we're missing someone really big so far, and we oh, gotta do them now. Oh, yes, we do. Some Elvis Presley, you are you ready? You want some Elvis Presley out of there, Of course Barrington they do. Area? Now, Elvis <laughs> Presley actually had a very rocky road to show business. Uh, yes. It started early for the poor kid. At the age of 10, he placed only fifth in his first singing contest. In the sixth grade, he was bullied for playing hillbilly music during the lunch hour. In the eighth grade, his music teacher actually told him he couldn't sing. What? And she gave him a C in music class. Uh. And in 1954, at the age of 19, when he was trying to enter into the music business, he was told he better stick to his truck driving job because he would never make it as a singer. Wow, what criticism, right? And mm -hmm. you know, even when he made it big, the criticism just kept to coming. And you know, there's a, a, a famous story about a big Catholic diocese that wrote an urgent letter to the FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover claiming that Elvis was, and I quote, a danger to the security of the United States with his passions that arouse the sexual passions of youth. Wow. <laughs> That's a quote. Ed Sullivan, love the Ed Sullivan show, right? But Ed Sullivan described Elvis as unfit for family viewing. Yeah. Yep. And after singing Hound Dog on the Milton Berle show, the New York Daily Post wrote this, pop music has reached its lowest depths in the grunt and groin antics of one Elvis Presley. So what can one possibly say to such criticism? I say, all hail the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. <laughs> the war threw a party in the county jail. The prison band was there when they began to wail. The band was jumping. 
jumping and the joint began to swing. You should have heard this knockdown jailbird sing. Let's rock. Everybody, let's rock. Everybody in the whole cell block. Who wants to dance to the jailhouse rock? Spider Murphy played the tenor saxophone. A little Joe was blowing on the slide drum bone. The drummer boy from Illinois went crash boom bang. The whole room section was a purple gay. Let's rock. Everybody, let's rock. Everybody in the whole cell block. Who was dancing to the jailhouse rock? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Well, you ain't never caught a rabbit and you ain't no friend of mine. Well, they said you was high class. That was just a lie. Yeah, they said he was high class, but that was just a lie. Well, well you ain't never caught a rabbit and you ain't no friend of mine. You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog.
thank you so much for joining us tonight, Barrington Area Library. It has been a pleasure to be with you virtually. We hope you enjoyed celebrating the music of the 50s. Again, we are Matt and Cynthia Gruel of Nostalgia Entertainment. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Check us out at Nostalgia Entertains, with an S, nostalgiaentertains.com. Take care and God bless.